In this video, I will be going over the five biggest misconceptions in generative AI over the last year. My name is Giacomo Vianello. I am a director, machine learning engineer at Moody's, where I develop AI and ML multimodal systems. And I'm also an instructor for Udacity, teaching computer vision, generative AI, and machine learning operations. Udacity just launched a completely refreshed generative AI nano degree, making this the perfect time to explore what's new in the field. I'll share more details about the program at the end of the video. For now, let's go to the list. This is my take on the most important five misconceptions on AI as of today. Number one, AI equals LLM. When people think about AI today, ChatGPT usually comes to mind. But here's the thing, large language models are just one slice of a much bigger pie. AI actually includes things like computer vision systems, analyzing medical images and monitoring traffic. It includes the recommendation algorithms behind your streaming services. It covers reinforcement learning agents, optimizing supply chains, and robotic systems navigating warehouses. LLMs are impressive, no question there. They've made huge strides in understanding and generating language, but they are not the whole story. Most people don't know that most of the AI running in production today consists of smaller, specialized models built to do one thing really well, rather than trying to do everything. So LLMs are AI, but AI is not only LLMs. Number two, generative AI solutions are turnkey solutions. The pitch sounds great. Just plug in some AI and watch the magic happen. But anyone who's actually implemented these systems knows better. Getting Gen AI to work reliably takes serious prompt engineering and serious work. You iterate, test, refine, and repeat. Models behave differently between versions and providers, so you're constantly adapting. You need evaluation frameworks to catch problems and make sure outputs meet your standards. What looks great in a demo can fall apart the moment you try to scale. So you need testing, iteration, you need to gain expertise in how models behave and continuous feedback loops. You shouldn't be afraid of this work, it's not rocket science, but it takes resilience, clarity of intent, and rigor. Underestimated this engineering work is probably the main reason why many AI deployments fail. Number three, you don't need software engineers anymore. AI can code, so why hire developers? It's a tempting thought, especially when tools like Cursor and Claude let non-technical people build working prototypes and personal apps or help aspiring developers learn coding much faster than before. I am personally very excited by this democratization. More people can turn ideas into reality. People who didn't think they could code are now enjoying building software and web apps. Professional engineers are also more productive and enjoy their work more as measured by multiple sources. However, there is a massive gap between a working prototype and production-ready software. Professional engineering means understanding architecture that scales, security practices that protect users, and design patterns that keep systems maintainable over time. It means knowing the trade-offs between different approaches for your specific context. So AI can generate code that runs with little supervision, but it still needs a lot of expert supervision to generate code that scales and performs. So software engineering has evolved. It definitely did not die. Number four, introducing AI is about introducing AI tools. Here's a striking statistic from McKinsey. 88% of organizations use AI, but only 39% report any efficiency impact whatsoever, and just 6% see more than a 5% gain in efficiency. Most organizations are stuck in what you might call pilot purgatory. They run experiments that never scale. Sound familiar? It's the same pattern we saw with machine learning and data science before LLMs, where initiatives rarely made it to production. The organizations actually seeing results do things differently. They combine strategic vision with education and grassroots experimentation. They give teams closest to the work, space to learn and explore problems they deeply understand. So successful AI adoption isn't just about deploying tools. It requires organizational change and fostering a culture of experimentation and a growth mindset. It also requires the entire organization to be able to move faster, including, for example, legal and compliance. Number five, generative AI understands things like humans do. AI produces impressive outputs, but recent research from IBM and MIT 
shows its processing information very differently than we do. AI systems can generate great results without actually developing world models. Those coherent understandings of how things work and relate to each other that we humans develop growing up. Humans develop understanding through physical interaction with the world. AI lacks this embodied grounding that connects symbols to meaning. So these systems are excellent at recognizing patterns in data, but they operate through statistical associations, not human-level understanding of reality. This matters because when AI fails, it fails in ways no human would, missing obvious context, generating plausible-sounding nonsense, breaking down when confronted with slight variations of familiar problems. Recognizing these differences helps us use AI more effectively. We can understand where it excels and where human judgment remains essential. Now that we've discussed the five biggest misconceptions in AI today, let me give you five reasons why you should enroll in the new Gen AI Nano degree. Number one, learn the complete Gen AI stack. You'll get your hands on key frameworks and tools like Hugging Face, Pydantic AI, Gemini OpenAI APIs, plus optimization techniques like parameter-efficient fine-tuning and QLora. Number two, master everything end-to-end. -end. You will start with fine-tuning LLMs and with prompt engineering. Then you will move to building rack systems and wrap up with multimodal workflows and apps. Number three, build real production apps. You will actually deploy your models with gradual structure outputs using Pydantic AI and set up monitoring with OpenTelemetry and Arise Phoenix. Number four, work with all types of data. You will build systems that process text, images, audio, and video, analyzing and understanding them for actual business needs, not just generating content. And finally, ship responsibly. You will add content filters, manage costs, and evaluate your systems for accuracy. Thanks for watching. Tell us what you think are the biggest misconceptions in AI in the comments, and we'll see you on the Udacity platform.